The summer in the U.S. is a wonderful opportunity to enjoy the great outdoors. Unless there are record forest fires in Canada that make the air so unhealthy that it's not safe to go outside. This happened in June 2023. Acquainting inhabitants of the Northeast United States with the air quality index. Now, when this occurred, we asked ourselves questions like, what is the air quality index? What does it measure exactly? Is it safe to go outside? And is it even the same all around the world? We're going to talk about that today. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. In early June in Pennsylvania, I was outside and I could smell wood smoke. That's not too unusual in the countryside, but in winter, in the summer, seeing no fires around, it was pretty weird. So what was going on? There was a distinct haze that was forming over the otherwise clear sky. In fact, the weather said the skies were totally clear and yet it was getting dark. Soon the news reports got my attention. Forest fires in Nova Scotia and Quebec, some of the worst in Canadian history were raging and they were starting much earlier in the season than normal. In addition, the jet stream was carrying these clouds of smoke down into Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. Now, I've lived most of my life in Pennsylvania, and I had never encountered something like that before. Naturally, these forest fires had a huge impact both environmentally and on the people living up in Canada, but I'm not going to go into that in any detail. I just want to extend my sincerest condolences to everybody who was affected and to thank our friends in the north for trying to control these fires as much as they've been able. So once there were news reports coming out warning people not to go outside because the air quality was so terrible, I was glued to the weather app looking at these numbers trying to figure them out. I had never seen these colors before. I'd seen the green, maybe yellow here and there like in a city, but red, purple, maroon. This was totally unexpected. How high does this number even go? How hazardous would this poor air quality actually be to my health? Now, maintaining and improving my physical health is something that's very important to me, but something that's also important is maintaining good mental health. And for that, I'm happy to tell you about this video sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online professional therapy. There's enormous value in this experience because some situations require help from outside one's network of family and friends. At BetterHelp, they assess your needs and they match you with your own licensed professional therapist. But should you need to change therapists for any reason, they make it free and easy. BetterHelp is not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it's professional online counseling available to clients worldwide. You can log into your account at any time and send a message to your therapist, and they ensure timely and thoughtful responses. You can also set weekly phone or video sessions, all from a park bench or the comfort of your own home. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is available for those who need it. I sincerely feel that anyone who wants to get a better life through counseling should have that opportunity, and it's just amazing that BetterHelp is available. Visit betterhelp.com slash for 10% off your first month. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for supporting this video and for the work you do in bettering people's lives. So how is air quality index calculated exactly? Well, it requires the measurement of five pollutants in the air. Carbon monoxide or CO, sulfur dioxide or SO2, nitrogen dioxide or NO2, ozone or O3, and PM. No, this doesn't stand for polymathy, but for particulate matter suspended in the air. Two types of particulate matter are measured in the AQI. PM10 indicates particles of 10 micrometers or less, and PM2.5 indicates those of 2.5 micrometers or less. In the case of air pollution caused by forest fires, fly ash is covered by the PM10 index and soot by the PM2.5 index. In this chart, we can see that the various pollutants are considered hazardous depending on their concentration in parts per million, parts per billion, or micrograms per cubic meter and duration measured in hours, different for each substance. These concentrations over time or exposures are organized into the level of potential danger to humans. The exposures in the 0 to 50 category are considered good, 51 to 100, moderate, 101 to 150, unhealthy for sensitive groups of people, such as those who have respiratory or cardiovascular problems, 151 to 200, unhealthy, so children and the elderly would be most at risk. 201 to 300 is very unhealthy, so no one should be spending time outside, and 301 to 500 is hazardous to everyone. Imagine my shock to see the AQI reach 498, two points below the maximum in this scale, in my hometown on June 7th. You might say I was feeling off balance. 
Imagine my further shock to discover that everything I just told you is only relevant for air quality index in the United States. The five pollutants of the American AQI are those regulated under the Clean Air Act of 1963. And the US Environmental Protection Agency came up with this AQI thing in the late 1960s. But every country has a different way of measuring their air quality index with different pollutants being considered, different concentrations, different exposures. So you can't actually compare any of them directly one to the other, even if you're using the same weather app. I was really surprised by this. There is no universal AQI. In Canada, the Air Quality Health Index, or AQHI, used to include sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide, like the American AQI, but these were removed because the Canadian government determined that these two pollutants didn't seem to be a good predictor of health effects. The scale runs from 1 to 10, with 1 to 3 being low health risk. In China, a country famous for its poor air quality, the AQI goes from 0 to 300 plus, with excellent and good being below 100. But to further complicate matters, in Hong Kong, they use a system of 1 to 10, like Canada. As in Canada, 1 to 3 is low risk. Japan's AQI is similar to that of the US, where 0 to 50 is considered good. The UK's DACI is like Canada's and Hong Kong's on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 to 3 is low risk. In the European Union, there is the Common Air Quality Index, or KEKI, or is it KAKI? Anyway, it goes from 0 to 100, and 0 to 50 is the low risk category comparable to the American AQI's good category. Or at least it was. In 2017, the European Environmental Agency implemented the European Air Quality Index, or YECI. This system seems to have done away with the number scales for the categories, as the numbers in the scale are only used for the individual pollutants in micrograms per cubic meter. The good and fair categories are the ones you want here. Which brings us to another question. Do these categories mean a certain mix? Like you have to have about 50% of this pollutant and 25% of that to get the red category or something like that? Thankfully, it's not that confusing. It's actually pretty simple. If you, with any one of these individual pollutants, reach a certain concentration or exposure, then you're in that category. It doesn't matter if it's only one of the pollutants or several of them. Say we're using the American AQI. If the air is totally clean of all these pollutants except for carbon monoxide at 13 parts per million concentration level as measured over the last eight hours, then that is in the unhealthy category. It doesn't matter that it's the only pollutant in the air at the time. So when all that smoke from Canada came down into the US in early June, the dangerous AQIs we were seeing were most likely almost entirely due to particulate matter. And my intuition is that it was the finer grain particulate matter of the PM 2.5 type, since it had to travel hundreds of kilometers from the source. So the crazy thing is that there isn't any direct comparison between the various air quality indices. If I use, say, the iOS weather app, I can go to Rome and see the EAQI is green in Rome, and the US AQI is green in New York, but these numbers don't correspond one to the other and don't necessarily even measure all the same pollutants as we saw above. So there is no way to compare and contrast them. Or is there? So I found a cool trick that you'll probably like. If you go to the precipitation map, you can change the active layer here to air quality. Zooming out, just as we saw before from my screenshot in early June, the intense colors in Canada are presented according to the American Air Quality Index now. And if I simply zoom over Europe, all the data on the screen are presented still in the US system. Isn't that cool? Similarly, I can go to Rome in the app, open the precipitation map, change the layer to air quality, and see the air quality across North America presented in the European system. I can do this for the Canadian and British systems as well. One thing that jumps out at me here with these potentially confusing different systems that are hard to compare and contrast is they generally do give you a decent picture. If the colors are warm, like yellow, red, purple, maroon, you know to probably do some more investigating and find out if the air quality is in fact unhealthy for whatever category you might pertain to. Whereas if it's green or blue, it's probably just fine for everybody, unless of course you suffer from seasonal allergies. <coughs> the EPA has not yet named pollen as a pollutant. So keep an eye on the air quality index, especially if you're in the vicinity of a forest fire or some other major pollutant. And remember that if the air is actually unhealthy, face masks can be helpful for certain kinds of pollutants, especially 
particulate matter. Thanks again to BetterHelp, and especially thanks to each and every one of my Patreon supporters. Walete. Summertime in the United States is a wonderful... Oh, meal deal cuts. Now, obviously, these forest fires had a huge impact both environmentally and on people living in Quebec and Ontario and in other places in Canada. But I'm not going to talk about that in much detail. I want to just sort of talk about how it affected me. The summertime in the United States is a wonderful time. This time is the time. Oh, my God. No, not bastante cafeíno. Cafeíno. I sentido. Cafeíno. And I, my... I'm not John. I'm good at writing, but I'm so terrible at remembering what I said. So how is the air quality index calculated? Calculated. Okay. Certo. So how is air quality index calculated exactly? Well, it's 